All right, Ian, we got a we got an NES collection on eBay that we're going to talk about. We haven't talked about this in a while. Stuff like this uh, happening uh, because you know last year didn't count uh, as for a lot of things in terms of maybe a price is exploding on some retro games and other things. But this is an interesting sort of case study because now we're in 2021. Um, so there's an, an NES collection uh, right now. Uh, Nintendo NES collection, Little Samson and all. Uh, no, no, it's just a buy now. There's no best offer. Eighteen thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. It's in Nevada. This, uh, this, this, uh, this collector, uh, p- pimp for life, <laughs> pimp for life, <laughs> is, is trying to uh, is trying to sell here. Um, free economy shipping. There you go. Very nice. So, so we're we're at a point now where we've seen the shift. We saw the shift coming for years in terms of less less interest in the NES carts themselves. We, we talked about how the, it peaked around mid 2016, pre pandemic. The pandemic gave it a little, little boost, a shot in the arm, pardon the pun, and it might it might probably slide down again. But in the past couple of years, we've had a lot of these collectors go for the, um, you know, the, the water graded seal games, and then some of the complete in box were pulled up. But I don't think that it, it pulled the cartridge stuff up that much, all at all. I don't think the water stuff did that because it didn't happen before the pandemic. Um, so it's, it's a case of, of seeing, I guess the question I'm going to ask is at this point in time, how many people are in the market to buy an entire NES collection? Like this? If you're a collector or if you're trying to collect how many people are out here that are interested in stuff like this versus like five or six years ago, right. or you might be more easily, because a lot that came up a lot more back then. We talked about it because we're like, oh, is this going to sell for this amount of money? Or is this, you know, this good? I think, I think we're in a, a much different spot nowadays where you can say, hey, $18,000 for, we'll get into the details, like 700 NES games. Is that something that's viable and that you can find a buyer for? Uh, so let's go down here. What we're, we got here. It's, Entire, I like this, entire NES collection. Little Samson, Flintstones, Dinosaur Peak, Panic Restaurant, and all the rarest Nintendo games, except for Stadium Events. Events. Because Stadium Events would be half of that value right there. Yep. To the cartridge. So that's what, that's a, a huge caveat because people, if they saw that it had Stadium Events there, would have bought it. They would have yeah. bought it. And, and then worked, and worked the time to get their, make their money back in all the other games like, like uh, Bonk's Adventure, you know, uh, you know, and all like even like the just very uncommon games like Dragon Warrior Four. You know, games you can get like maybe up to a hundred bucks for, uh, uh, in, in games of that nature. And then obviously you have the big one that's worth like ten grand uh, there. But it does not include any of the licensed games, because once you get the unlicensed games, then obviously then this would be a huge deal if it had like the Panesians, if it had, you know, a Caltron, if it had all those uh, all the Color Dreams games. Because those games are all worth. You know, uh, dozens of dollars, if not a hundred dollars. <laughs> dozens. Well, dozens. I was gonna say ten dollars. Like the cheapest one is usually like like uh, Captain Comic, which is like which fifteen. Used to be like, used to be like yeah, it used to be ten or fifteen bucks. That's the cheapest unlicensed game if you don't count the Tengen games. And this doesn't count the Tengen games either. Tengen games get no respect, unfortunately. It's, there's only a few of them. Uh, let's see. There's a few dishes like Disney's Aladdin. Uh, three Tengen games: Gauntlet, Rolling Thunder, and Tubin, and two Game Genies. But you do get a complete in box Miracle Piano, <laughs> and you get a. Uh, you, you get a Nintendo Power Set, which is the one with the power pad. There. Mm. So, th- this is the one that's actually most interesting to me. The manuals. There's almost no manuals here. Terminator, Dragon Warrior, Knights, Knights, I mean, King's Knight, not Knights Knight. Super Mario 2, Gauntlet, Sesame Street, Countdown, Untouchables, Cool World, Indiana Jones, Last Crusade, Taito. That's a hard to find one. Uh, that one or Ubisoft? Which one? Taito, is that the Taito one or Ubisoft one? It's hard to find. Taito's a hard to find one. Um, uh, and then Prince of Persia. It is shocking to me that you would amass a collection with 700 games and only have about 10 manuals that you acquired throughout the way if you didn't sell them off. Because even by accident, uh, finding NES games in the wild or uh, finding them in eBay lots or on eBay, a, a good amount will have manuals with them. I'm just shocked that it's that such a low percentage. That's like a shockingly low to me. Because yeah. I built up my collection, I would say I got to, I'd say forty percent of my games, maybe over a third, I had the manual with them without me buying them separately, easily, just by finding them along the way. Really? I think maybe a third, maybe a third, definitely not a half. But it was it was not a you know just find them at a swap meet and they had the manuals or because they, they still have the case on them. Right, um, manuals slipped into the side. Uh, most of the games are in good condition. Four have damage. Wario Woods. They all have damage. They're all crap um, for whatever reason. Skier die. Short order explode. Rocky and Bullwinker. That Bullwinkle. Bullwinker. 
Rocky and the old bullwinker. <laughs> and then a crack on the card of Cowboy Kid. Ooh. Mm. That's that's a tough to find one. But they've personally cleaned and tested it almost every single game. We know what that's like. Doing that for an entire collection. Yes. We know what that's like, but we had that. So anyway. So um, do, do you think this, there's a there's a market for something like this in 2021? I, I think, think this. I, I basically asking the price of what probably what these are retail you know, price are. No, I th I think at this point we're we're kind of beyond that, or we're getting we're getting beyond that. Um, Much like a Beyond Burger, we, we can't believe. It. We talk about it as, as 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 we get further and further from from the the height of NES collecting popularity. Five years um, already. The the most or before people lose interest in. I think the unknown titles whenever a system is like at its hottest people want basically anything that has to do with it they want all the titles they want complete sets but as time has what? gone on the interest in a lot of that um goes down well, people people there's not a lot of people out there right now actively hunting down a copy of supercars yes yeah, the one you always use you always go right to something like supercars yeah i always go to something like goal two i always go to like goal two card sure. defined game you will not want that game for the most part unless you're trying to complete an NES collection. Or bases loaded for. Like a yeah. legitimately rare game. You, it's, you don't come across it. You don't want that game or know it exists. You don't know that game exists unless you're like a hardcore right. NES collector. Yeah, and it's funny because as hard as baseball or as uh, bases loaded for is to find, it doesn't sell for much either because it's just a fucking sports game. Well, that, for a while it did until this happened. Let me look this up on eBay now. Now, now I'm curious. Bases loaded is four NES. I thought it was always like sub ten. Oh no! Now it's like forty six. Buy it now. Um, it it was it was one of the last ones that were sure. brought up. It was. Um. So anyway, you no, know, I, I so I think I think this is a tough sell because we're back kind of at that point where people who want to uh, buy NES stuff, they're happy buying the bigger name titles and buying what they they need. Um, I think the the hunt for complete sets is kind of a a, a passing been, fad. Yeah, that's a past, a past fad. It's, that, that's old. That's old. Fo old fogies like me. Right. It's done. So no, I think um, it's going to be tough to sell everything at once, especially at retail value. Yeah, you're going to have to. You're going to have to come down. You, you can't. You can't get out what you put into it, as Ian likes to. I mean, uh, yeah. Say, I will not. Rarely is that ever going to happen. If I sell a chunk of my stuff, well, will I get out what I put into it? Because I bought a lot of it from the old stuff. I will not get out what I put in for the stuff I paid full price for. I've, I've, uh, for the most part, I will not do that. Maybe it's like an extremely rare, you know, game. I'll be able to get most of it, but most of the stuff you won't, you know, I won't get. Why well, I could do, you know, piecing it out. You, you just won't. It just, it just isn't a possibility anymore. Like if a dealer, like a dealer might buy this stuff, maybe I'll give you like nine grand for this. Right. After they go through, okay, I can make the money back over time or whatever, or even less because time is money and the effort to do this. So, uh, oh, he has some of those on the top. I thought there were boxes. No, there are, uh, those cases you buy um, on the top, like the rental cases where you get the print. I, I don't like those personally. I just don't like those. I think they're weird to do that to put your game in in a, in a like kind of a rental case. But um, all right, I think it's interesting. We haven't talked about one of these in years, probably. Bookshelves are not included, so he has a sense of humor. Yeah, all right. <laughs> looks like he has. He's got my shelves. He has the, the Atlantic Oscar shelves. That's what it looks like. Same type of shelves. Looks like very nice. Very nice. Um, this collection has taken me many years to accumulate, and I hope it goes to a good home. Eh, moving on in life, it happens. It happens. I think that if I ever sold my NES collection off, um, if I would be wistful or not, I always think about that. I think about other collectors that have done that. The same. We know your Buffalo or Buffalo pal sold his stuff. Mm -hmm. Grimsey, uh, Dane, Nintendo Age sold everything. To, to I mean, everything he had NES. And I wonder what at that point what you feel afterwards. If you feel like that's just a you turn the page in a, in your life, and that's over, or you, 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 or, you or do you start again? I, or I, you hold I, on, you hold on to the memories, and you're just like you know what, that was a phase of my life, and it's over. It's like hey, it's a phase of my life where I was playing a lot of racquetball, and it's gone. Well, I don't know. And I think for a lot uh, of people, and I mean, I, I, I think Scott would actually be a great example. I think for them, the fun was the collecting. It's the hunt. Yeah. It is. And I, you get it and you're like okay and you, you you finally catch it and you look at it for a while and you go all right and then you or the, or the dog, catch and release <laughs> you or, just put it back out into the wild or the dogs that chase the car what do you do when you get yeah. the, get the car you can you can be an insane person and 
do NES marathons and, and do books, but that, that that's a rarity though. That's not most of the people, you know, trying to find a use for it. That was me actually trying to find a use. Hey, Ian, let's do this NES marathon thing where we play every single game. Right. And it's like, well, that's a crazy person. Thinks about that. No one was celebrating the 20th anniversary in 2010. No, I right. assure you, no one was. And now that the 35th happened, uh, you know, last year, everyone brought that up. In 2010, it was not a thing, surprisingly. It wasn't. It was so weird what's happened the past five, six years when it comes to the retro stuff. Yeah. Totally different. Sorry. I am a crazy person. Sorry, you know, put you through that. Cl- cleaning tubs of NES games out during it's your fine. spare time. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Remember you didn't want to be on camera during the during at first during the stream and you finally got on camera. You're like, hey, yeah. who's that person there? That's just that weird person. Holding that, that stream now. holding that stream together with bubblegum and tape. With, with that, <laughs> Literally with bubblegum and tape. With that tape. weird program that somehow didn't it, we didn't we didn't drop the, the stream at all. No. That first year. That's it's a no, I felt like if we had br- breathed wrong though, we we probably would have. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was an interesting time, Ian. We it was. All, we were all young and innocent. A lot less hair we had. Yeah. A lot less hair. Sort of growing out of ourselves as we get older here. All right, well that's it uh, on this. Uh, you want to pick this up for for uh, for, for Treg? Any of this stuff? No, yeah. no. <laughs> Does Treg want any of my stuff that I'm going to sell? Do you think? I don't think so. But oh. Bonnie will take some of your stuff. Treg wouldn't want anything, really. Okay, makes me sad. I mean, maybe. 